to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I had some questions from stained glass windows under my video in which I talked about the life cycle of orchid roots. I loved this comment and the question so much. <laughs> and in case others are wondering the same thing or haven't thought of this, I figured this video may be of interest. So, stained glass windows, which is a translation that I took from Google Translate, and I hope that it is correct. They were referring to how orchid roots behave during the dormant period that some orchids go through in their life cycle. How they behave? Are they able to absorb water? Is it necessary to reduce the amount of water when the tips of the roots are covered with the velamen, as in stopping growing but still viable? In this video, I'm going to share my observations, and I hope that with some visuals, how I'm going to answer those questions will make what I say more clear. Orchid roots are still absorbing water and a very tiny amount of nutrients, even if the orchid is dormant. You see, if they are in an environment out in nature, they still absorb water and some small amount of nutrients from dew or humidity, or both, if they are high enough in altitude where they are surrounded by clouds. Dormant orchids never go without water entirely. The roots are not dormant even if the rest of the orchid is. Even ground orchids that lose their foliage will be sustained by residual water from dew that does not evaporate but seeps down into the soil. It is just that everything happening within the orchid only slows down and also to a degree can grind to a halt, as would be the case with the ground orchids. And then to quickly answer the next point, when the tips of a root are covered with velamen, it indicates that the root has stopped growing for a time, but it is still alive and viable, still functioning to support the orchid in its next stage of growth, and it still requires watering to a degree, and that depends on which genus and the growing conditions we are talking about. For example, dormant dendrobiums, which can fall under the category of deciduous orchids, their roots will absorb some water while the orchid is dormant. In a high humidity environment, it is the water in the air that hydrates the roots as well as the dew point, and along with that moisture, some residual nutrients from the surroundings are being absorbed. Orchid roots have the capability of absorbing moisture and nutrients from the air, just like the roots that find themselves in the pot. So, while the orchid is dormant, the roots are still serving a purpose and will need light, occasional watering to sustain the orchid during the dormant or resting period. Most of these roots, if they are not perennial ground orchids, live in cloud forests where it is foggy and the humidity is high throughout the duration of their dormant period, and that fog carries a lot of moisture. However, in cultivation, we have to be careful with the amount of water we provide because unless we do not have the airflow to balance out the moisture, seeing as airflow dries out roots faster, in cultivation, inadequate airflow will result in the roots staying wet too long, causing them to rot. The reason being, the structures of the orchid are not using the water to grow or photosynthesize. So yes, it is advisable to reduce watering, but it is not advisable to put the orchid through the stress of drought. When I say that dormant roots continue to take up nutrients, that does not mean that we should apply a little fertilizer here or there. In cultivation, we can do a lot of damage by trying to replicate the minute amounts of nutrients that the orchid can absorb in nature. It is best to wait for signs of new growth or even nubbins forming that indicate the orchid is waking up and will bloom before we see active new growth in form of structures. If in doubt about how much watering a dormant orchid needs, then stay very, very conservative and keep the media or amount drier than usual. Or to be on the safe side, just a slight misting of the surface of the pot or mount every week will do the trick. All my dormant dendrobiums get a slight misting on sunny, dry days, but that is because my climate is so dry and they live outside without any humidity to sustain them. So by me misting them, I provide that level of humidity. However, I do not wet my mounts to the point that they are dripping wet. I pretend that I am that fog, that cloud, and leave a little water as I pass by. My mounts are super dry during the dormant season compared to the growing season. When it comes to seeing velamen close over a root, 
the root not being dead, that is, but the growing point has stopped, watering should continue as normal depending on the situation the orchid that is showing this behavior finds itself in. As in, what is the orchid going to do next? And while you ponder that question and think through your collection, would you please do me a solid and like the video, share it around, and if you have not subscribed to the channel, then taking a one-liner from a classic song, but I like the rendition sung by Ellie Golding. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Please subscribe and let me know in the comments that you did. I have a reason for that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So housekeeping out of the way, let's get back to an example. My best example for the scenario of what is the orchid going to do next is observing the root activity on species vandaceous orchids that have a distinct cycle of root growth. In those cases, the tips stop growing because the hormones are being mobilized to proceed with the next phase of the orchid's growing cycle. Species orchids will show the clear start and stop of what a root does based on what the orchid is going to do next. And for that reason, I like to point out my Neophenicia falcata because in the spring, when the orchid wakes up, the first thing it does is start new roots. Branching on older roots happens, and the layman at the tips of the older roots activate and continue growing. But during the course of the season, this massive root activity slows down and quite quickly at that because the orchid is then preparing to grow spikes and blooms. During all this time, the roots are still functioning and the orchid needs a lot of water and nutrients, even if the velamen has closed up over the tip and there is no more active root growth. The orchid is still busy with preparing to bloom and should be considered in active growth, even if the roots have stopped their activity. Once a neo has finished its bloom cycle, it basically does not grow anything for maybe six to eight weeks not even leaves. That is because it is in its resting cycle. Orchids that rest during the hotter months of the year do so because they are conserving energy while the tougher conditions are around and only when the conditions are safer for them to grow actively again do they start resuming active growth. That includes root activity and possible foliage growth depending on what orchids you're talking about. During the period of rest, however, it is a good idea to continue misting the orchid if humidity levels are low, and mine are. So, all my vendaceous orchids that show that kind of root growth cycle will get misted to support the hydration uptake of the roots. But back to my Neo here, once the roots show signs of starting again, usually because temperatures have dropped slightly, I start to fertilize as per usual depending on which orchid and what kind of fertilizer concentration is required based on size. After the period of active growth, the root growth slows down again. And upon observing that happening, I reduce any fertilizers to the point of none at all, because based on the time of year, the roots stop growing as the orchid is going into a period of rest and will not be absorbing any nutrients that I would provide. This being an example of an orchid that is not deciduous, but has a resting period. The resting period of such an orchid can also be observed in the color and appearance of the leaves. The color is not a fresh green anymore, but it appears a little more dull in its hue. You will find that it is better to observe root life cycle and their behavior on species orchids. Some primary hybrids will show the same pattern of behavior because the parents are two species, but the complex hybrids have a mix of parentage and most of those hybrids are a combination of the strength of each parent to make one plant which is bred for vigor of growth all year round as well as consistent bloom cycles. It is a little more difficult to observe that the layman will close on a hybridized orchid or that a hybridized orchid will show signs of resting. In that case, the orchid is behaving in accordance to what the parents have pulled together, so to speak. And the care should be considered that of a continuous growing orchid. My Vanda Chao Praia is a classic example of that. It grows roots all season long, as long as I can keep up with the humidity levels around the roots. And if I can meet that challenge, then I have growing root tips all the time, even while it prepares a spike grows the spike and blooms. Some roots may close over and others just keep growing. 
And because the roots are really going nuts, now that the temperatures are even more favorable for this orchid, resulting in the fact that the conditions are less stressful for the orchid, I have tied them back to save them from getting destroyed by brushing up against the fence. But look, it is also in spike. And that is how hybrids do. But back to species orchids. The same cannot be said for my Ascacentrum, which behaves like my Neo, as well as my Renantheras. They are continuous growers, and the pattern of root growth is similar to that of my Neo, because my climate slows them down during the colder months of the year. So, I have to care for the roots according to my environment, and not how they would be capable of growing in perfect conditions. With all the hybrids out there, it is always best to observe root behavior on species orchids as opposed to hybrids. The root behavior and belayman progression is much more distinct in species. In some species, actually, the closing of the belayman around root tips can be observed two times per year. Once, as warmer temperatures approach, and then again, as cooler temperatures kick in. With all this being said, roots on dormant orchids or where the velamen has closed over are still functioning and need support. Unless it is a dead root, but that is stating the obvious. <laughs> Whereas there are many orchids that will close the velamen, pause the root growth because they are starting the process of spiking, focus on the blooming, then after blooming they resume with root growth following a period of rest. Some orchids take a rest when it comes to root growth because the conditions are not ideal, so they conserve energy until conditions and climate improve and then they resume root growth. Conditions can include temperatures being too high or too low, day length increases which can be stressful to some orchids as well as daylight decreases because that is the seasonal cycle of where the orchid would be thriving under in its natural habitat. And when we can replicate our growing conditions to match the requirements of the orchids, the root cycle will follow along the lines of how the species grow their roots. In all these examples, I am referring to healthy roots and not having velamen burn because of salt buildup, which is also a reason why velamen will close up. However, seeing as that was not what I saw in stained glass windows questions, I am only referring to healthy roots, but... If you see the tip of your root go black or brown and it stops growing, then the reason for that is either lack of humidity or it touched something that caused it to desiccate due to lack of humidity. Another reason could be that it suffered some form of mechanical damage, etc, etc. It does not always mean over-fertilizing, however that can also be why the root tip closed up, as well as the wrong pH, which can cause a root tip to stop growing. If the rest of the root is healthy, it will start branching somewhere, should that root system have a branching characteristic. Oh boy, <laughs> I did not want to elaborate on that too much, but hey, you asked a question on a subject that I am gaga about, and the orchid root geek mode kicked in. <laughs> anyway, I hope that this was of interest, that it answered the questions in the greater detail and in the comments. And if this video triggered any more questions, ask away because Orchid Roots, let's talk. I love this topic. Really appreciate your support. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.